Maybe we shouldn't build nuclear warheads that can literally wipe out humanity as we know it. But hey, we have Donald Trump as a president. <laughs> Anything can happen. <laughs> Yo, what's up guys? Prince Charming. Today we're going to be checking out five things you're not supposed to know. So I'm going to be debunking these things that you're not supposed to know. You shouldn't be knowing these things, but I'm going to tell you anyways. Because, you know, I got to keep it 100 with y'all. I always keep it 100. Like, I don't keep any secrets from y'all. So I'm going to be telling you these things you don't need to know. Or you shouldn't know. Or, you, or you're or you not supposed to know. So make sure you hit me with that follow on you. Now I do streams. You're lit. You're going to love them. Make sure you follow me at Prince of Hawkum. Link in the description below. Also, hit me with a like. Drop a like on this video video this second hit that like button for your boy do it for me please make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn your post notifications on so you never miss one of my videos and lastly go ahead and comment something that you know but you're not supposed to know i actually know how much my parents make i'm not supposed to know that if you don't know that you're not supposed to know how much your parents make but i do and they could have bought me a car a long time ago but i hope you enjoyed this video prince shut up zip your lips and let's check out these five things you're not supposed to know hope you enjoy the video guys number five America's war on drugs was a racist excuse to continue. Oh, I could have told you that. <laughs> okay, so we probably all know about this, but the fact remains that from the government's mm -hmm. point of view, we really shouldn't. Politicians showing their hand and public servants spilling the beans has really brought to light how appallingly ridiculous the entire issue is. We don't think that drugs are good, but the fact is that the so-called war on them is actually causing more harm than good. Exactly! Is even worse, Especially the marijuana. concept was based purely on racism and warmongering, which isn't something to be proud of. Nixon, facing increasing pressure from the anti-war movement, decided to take out two political enemies with one stone. One was the anti-war movement, known for its laid-back attitudes towards drugs and free love. The other was black Americans. Unfortunately for Nixon, don't do drugs. Like, come on, guys. Admitted this openly and publicly, sparking a ton of backlash. Not only did the U.S. government purposefully mislead the public with a wildly exaggerated and vicious propaganda campaign, but the president himself was behind the move with all of his misguided rage. The fact that we <laughs> that now know drugs aren't that bad, kids. The war on drugs <laughs> and the fact that it's no, they're failing terrible. makes it even more surprising that it's still being waged. We also now know that the CIA, with full support of the government, was instrumental in introducing crack to American inner Oh, wow! Vile attempt to discredit the black population. Oh, wow! All of this okay, was conducted you see? in the name of power and highlights the corruption rampant mm. in the US government. That they're willing to throw so many of their citizens under the bus by imposing ludicrously <sighs> stiff minimum penalties for And you get more jail time for crack than coke. users spending more time incarcerated than murderers shows how little the government Insane. cares about its citizens. It's also a big mistake that this information was even made public. Still, we're happy that it was mm -hmm. brought to our attention at all, if only due to political incompetence. You see, you get way more time if you get caught with crack than cocaine. And you see, the, the reasoning behind that is crack was popular in black neighborhoods. So if you have something that's popular in black neighborhoods, maybe we should make it the penalty much more worse. That way we can lock up all these black people and, and you know, it's legal. But that's something that we all kind of know. This is this is general knowledge, guys. Like, if you don't know this, where have you been? Patrick Starr living under a rock? What other drugs did the government introduce to us? Like, are y'all holding back? Do y'all got the good stuff? Let me get a sample. <laughs> nah, chill. Don't, don't do drugs, kids. Don't do it. Number four, what happens in restaurant kitchens? For those who've worked in the food service industry, it's oh, man. Point, this'll just be business as usual. For everyone else, however, you're in for a rude awakening. It's always somewhat amusing when someone finds a hair in their food or a fly in their soup, then begin complaining uh, to the server about the terrible inconvenience. So gross. Now, there's nothing funny in the situation up until the point where the server looks down and, terribly surprised and concerned about your health and safety, offers to redo your dish. You probably think we're leading up to the worst part being the point where the head chef picks the hair out and sends it straight back with an extra dash uh, of condescension. Uh, That's actually the best part. Uh, no hairs in your food anymore. No problem there. 
What we're alluding to is the fact that every surface in that kitchen is most likely absolutely filthy. The oh yeah, off top. Kitchens, no matter how off often top. carefully the staff seems to clean up, is covered in a layer of grease that will seemingly never wash out. Oh, it's never. The staff <laughs> are constantly slicing fingers and burning themselves on hot surfaces. Blisters, mm -hmm. gashes, blood, and sweat are all staples of kitchen life, and they all add to the environment that you're oh, and we're eating it. It's hard to monitor hand washing, and this is the ultimate issue. Chances are good that most of the staff in any restaurant that you dine in don't care as much about your food's cleanliness as you do. Most are too busy, at least in their mind, to take the time to wash up. Either that or their- They be using the bathroom and they go flip a burger for if you. If your steak hits the floor on the uh. table and nobody else sees it, how much are you willing to wager that the kid bringing it out to you decided to fess up and tell the cooks they have to cook another? No. Pronto, then no. tell you that you're gonna have to wait. No. Yeah, restaurants, yeah, they- <laughs> It's very gross. I've worked in a restaurant. I've worked in two restaurants. And I can say, without a doubt, we didn't really care for cleanliness, like, at all. And it got to the point, like, where if, like, say if we ever have, like, a health inspection, like, a random health inspection, we could have got shut down. Because I'm telling you, we barely clean. And when we did clean, we were half-assing it. Like, trust me, guys. You have to really be known about restaurants. They don't clean. Very gross. Very gross. And they, they want you to tip them. They still want that tip. Number three, the Anarchist's Cookbook Recipes. This throwback doesn't contain just one item that we're not supposed to know. It's Anarchist. an entire cookbook full of nasty recipes that cover all manner of illicit activities and creations. Mostly forgotten these days, except for a handful of ne'er-do-wells, it was known for a time as the Hackers and Mischief Makers Bible. From credit card what fraud is this? to making homemade thermite, this book contains everything that your parents and the government never wanted you to know. The Can I get this is book? somewhat dated, as evidenced by a large section dedicated to phone freaking, which basically covers how to hack payphones and other devices. No, no way! Popular use. They have a book Many just on Barnes and Noble. Outlined by the cookbook Amazon? are outdated and pose no real threat in today's world. The bomb making sections, among a number of others, are still an issue in the wrong hands, and there's some dark stuff in there that you can learn how to make a bomb on Google, over. though. That being said. Most of these recipes are now being replaced by much larger scale operations. This list will not help you become a fully fledged guerrilla freedom fighter, but they will make you the bane of your neighborhood. Almost everything <laughs> the you bane of your neighborhood will also get you in serious trouble. Much of the methods, chemicals, and materials covered are extremely Bro, dangerous. Bro, who wrote and this book? Illegal. We do not Is this recommend legal? anyone actually attempt to build any of the recipes contained, as most will leave you permanently injured or dead. Oh God! Wrong. It comes as no surprise then that the Anarchist's Cookbook makes our list. So they have a cookbook where it basically shows you how to make so many bad things. I need to buy this book. Do I need to buy it? Because maybe I need to do some things. Maybe I need to learn how to make a bomb. You never know. And you see, the world may be ending pretty soon. We may have an apocalypse amongst us. You got to learn how to defend yourself. So this is probably a book you need to invest in. Number two, building a nuke. What? While this one is a little you can more just build nukes to pull off. This item should be noted by governments everywhere. Nowadays, even individuals can build their own nuke given enough time and That's the right insane. Specs. The good news here is that it's pretty difficult to get those specs in the first place, and the materials needed are extremely rare. A lot of them are also restricted and very hard to find no matter what connections you have. Unfortunately, this hasn't stopped a number of enterprising groups from building and testing their own nuclear devices. That is terrifying to think about, but might take a little while to sink in, so we'll Why are we building nukes? Like, can we be peace? People can, <laughs> can we just love each other? their own nukes in their backyard if they're dedicated enough. With all the energy released by one nuke, it's unnerving to find out that they're so easy to get a hold of today. To put this in context, let's take you back to 1995, when a group by the name of Am Shinrikyo launched a sarin gas attack in the Tokyo subway system. The attack itself was world news, but many outlets missed the group's connection to a seismic event that took place in the Australian outback two years earlier. It turns out that the group had bought a piece of land located in the middle of the Australian desert at a place called Banjawarn Station, 
The landowner gave them privacy and didn't. Bro, they look like from Monsters Inc. Very often. <laughs> yeah, Probably yeah. should have done so because the mysterious, like they got a sock on them. Unexplainable seismic event, completely ignored for so long by authorities, was actually the after effects of the group setting off a massive nuclear device. Why did we hear about this? Is that until the group was investigated following the Tokyo attacks, nobody had even suspected that the massive explosion could have possibly been a nuke. At least two full years passed between. Between when they Two years? The and when the authorities figured it out. Oh, man! To have recruited Soviet nuclear engineers. When we take that into consideration, plus the fact that they were also happily mining uranium in the area without any suspicions being aroused, the world Hold on. a much scarier place. We have all this firepower, bomb building, nuclear power happening, and we're just letting people do it in their backyards? We need to lock down on this whole nuclear things because we're going to destroy the world from blowing each other up. Nuclear warfare will be the end of this world. I'm calling it now. Don't nuke each other. Stop building nukes. Can we just all agree, come together and say, maybe we shouldn't build nuclear warheads that can literally wipe out humanity as we know it. But hey, we have Donald Trump as a president. <laughs> Anything can happen. <laughs> Number one. Marura Atoll. Marura also Atoll. known as Alpini, this tiny island is located in French Polynesia. While the use of the island as a nuclear testing ground for the French military is widely known and universally unpopular outside France, the island has supposedly not been used for that. What kind of island is this? 90s. Testing on the atoll, as far as nukes have been concerned, has also been an issue of international contention. The first test took place in 66, and the accounts are something out of the nightmares of all Greenpeace and PETA members combined. The blast was sufficiently powerful to pull all the water out of the lagoon, spraying it into the sky. Seconds later, I That's insane. report fish and all manner of sea creatures raining from the sky. Oh man! And irradiated. No account was given. That's so dope. No, that's not dope. But dogs present, to which preference is traditionally given when it comes to imaginative descriptions of heavy rain. But we can probably safely say that they were happy to not be involved with bombs of any size. What's puzzling these days is that the island is still actively blurred out by Google Maps. Not many places wow. in the world hold this distinction, but most that do are sites of the utmost secrecy. This begs the question why, if France is no longer conducting nuclear tests in that area, are these images deemed so top secret? After the government announced in 95 that it would recommence tests, the response was uniformly negative. The boycott even included an international embargo of Yeah, why are you wine, blowing up islands from what? Terribly. Whatever they're doing, they definitely don't want a repeat of that type of backlash and so are probably wisely keeping quiet. I don't understand why you would want to blow up an island just to test a nuke that we don't need. What do we need nukes for? We only need nukes for to threaten other people. That's the only reason we need nukes for. They don't serve us any good purpose. So I do realize, yes, war, we need armies to defend ourselves. But can we please all agree not to end the world by nuclear warfare? Can we please disagree on that? Well, that was it for this video, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. So those are five things you're not supposed to know. Now you know it, so the government's probably gonna be after you. I'm sorry that I had to do it to y'all. Sorry I had to tag y'all, but if I knew it, y'all gotta know it. You know, we're in this together. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment on this video if you wanna reply from yours truly, Prince Charming. My name is Prince of Hawkum. Stay charming, my friends. Yeah, yeah.